Hey, welcome to the first episode of Chit Speak, which is just really a fancy name for my uh, vlogs. This is the first one that I've done and you're here. Thank you for being here. In this episode, we're going to be talking about how I made those meeples that I've been posting on my social networks and my website. A lot of people ask me how I made them, so I thought that this would be a great uh, Chit Speak first episode. Last bit of bookkeeping, vlogs are not going to stick to the under two minutes that the rest of my videos on my channel stick to these episodes so we can get to know each other a bit better and uh, talk board game related stuff at a bit more length. Two minutes is just not uh, long enough, specifically for something like a tutorial. Let's uh, crack on and I'll let you know what you need to make these meatballs. So the most important thing, and this is what I make mine out of, choose what you like. Maybe you've got power tools, I don't know. You might be able to make them out of timber. I make mine out of insulation foam, and that is this stuff here. And you get it in a massive sheet at your hardware store, and it's wonderful stuff for carving. You can carve it with a knife quite easily. Nice sharp blade, you can pick at it. You can do all sorts of stuff with it. This is the stuff I've been using. This is actually thinner than the stuff that I have been using. Here's the stuff I have been using. I'm using this because I'm uh, running out of the thicker stuff and this is just a tutorial. All right, so insulation foam. That's what you're going to need. That's your most important thing. It's a base. Craft foam, which is this stuff you get in any craft shop. It's also foam. You can sand it and cut it and tear it and do whatever you want with it. So they're your two main uh, things. This is what the 40K meeple is made of and this is pretty much what all the meeples I have put up so far are made of. As well as this you're going to need a cutting table which I'll show you in a minute. If you don't have one don't panic. A nice sharp blade will do the job. It will just take you longer. You're also going to need some scissors and a pattern. I just printed off a meeple shape and cut it out with some scissors. Then what you do is you get that, you pop it on your foam, draw around it and cut it out. And when you've cut it out, you end up with uh, this kind of thing. So they're light, but very sturdy. You're also going to need uh, glues, paints, and brushes for painting them when you have finished building them. All right. Now, if you are a bit of a sculptor, I am not, you might want to also get some of this stuff. This is called foam clay, and it is essentially craft foam or EVA foam. comes in a jar like this. You can squish it and sculpt it into shapes. So if you're great at sculpting, uh, this stuff is going to be your dream come true. So you sculpt it. It shrinks just a tiny bit as it dries. It becomes super light and it essentially turns into this stuff and retains whatever shape you've sculpted. So you can imagine if you have that skill, your meeples are going to be next level. Right. So for cutting it out, you need a modeling knife. There are better ones than this, but I'm just going to show you how easy it is for this to cut. When you're cutting out your meeple, you need to do multiple runs, even with a sharp blade, but it'll just go through and it gives you a nice smooth finish as well. Here we go. Beautiful. Now, if you are lucky enough to have a cutting table, even better. This is what I use when I'm making D&D terrain or tabletop game terrain and other things. This is magic. So this is essentially a hot wire table and it acts a little bit like a band saw or a scroll saw when you're using timber, but it works really great with foam. So this is how I've cut out my meeples. So you draw the pattern on and then run it through here and it's as easy as that. You see how great this thing is. It's fantastic. So if you can afford one of these and you're thinking of uh, starting to make foam props or uh, tabletop terrain, this is great. Get it on your Christmas list really quick. So once we've cut out our meeple shape, this is when the fun begins. This is when we can texture it and add things to it and make it freaking awesome. Although having said that, guys, I'm never going to beat that 40k one. I mean, it is the pinnacle that is never going to happen again. Right, so the easiest form of texture, and I've done it on this one in one of the other four times I've filmed this video, uh, is aluminum foil or aluminium foil. So you roll that into a ball and you just use that by sort of pushing it on what you're doing. So you start off with this sort of flat texture. And when you do this, it adds some really nice texture. Now, if you're making uh, d, d terrain, say you're making some roadways or pathways or dungeon tiles, this thing here is magic. You just push it in and when you paint it, you paint it black and then you dry brush it gray and it will look like stone paving tiles. Absolutely fantastic. And everyone's got this stuff in their drawer at home, I would assume. So easy peasy. Now for other things, I use 
clay tools. Now, if you haven't got these things, don't worry. You've got stuff that you can replace these with around the house, I guarantee it. So you can see here, I did this earlier in one of the other <laughs> films. This is how I did the chocolate layer meeple, chocolate layer cake. Yes, it took me flipping ages, but it was worth it. Just tapping that on there. Now, if you don't have this, it doesn't matter because you've got a fork in your kitchen drawer you get four or five uh, dots at once. Just give that a bell. These things here, you could use the back of a teaspoon or a spoon. These just roll in and you can add eyes or whatever you want. Maybe you just want it to have dimples. That's a great way of doing that. So the back of a teaspoon, you can uh, use your finger. So for, the, for this one, for the stone golem, which has a light inside it, I just use my finger for that one. So, you can see I've started doing it here. Just pick away at it. This stuff's soft. So just pick away and you'll get that stone texture. Once you paint it, you're laughing. That is you. And you can't really make any mistakes because it's meant to be rough. It's not smooth hewn. It's not uh, marble. It's uh, stone. Your nail. You can see I've done a few here already on the other takes. Anything you've got, you can carve this stuff. It is magical. You want to do a little bit of battle damage, say uh, you've got one, get your knife. Let's give him some battle damage on the shoulder. Let's cut a little triangle out. Maybe we'll run it down with this. Maybe we'll give him some little ones as well. That's how I did the battle damage on the 40K. Done, again, when you paint it, you're good to go. Right, another trick for you, the horror meeple. So you'll, you'll probably remember this one from when I posted it. I think it was the first one. I think it was the first one I posted. This one here, I just pushed in, put some eyes in and some scarring. Now how I got this overall texture, you can see it's covering the entire thing, is some PVA glue in a bowl with some water, make a little liquid out of it. And then you just get kitchen roll, a bounty or I don't know, whatever they're called in America. I think they're called Bounty in America. A uh, kitchen roll that you wipe up your messes in your kitchen with. Put strips of that or pieces of that into your PVA. Just start gluing them on at random, random places until the whole thing is done and let it dry. And it dries sort of, dries like a plastic. You can even sort of sculpt it a little bit. So the edges of the scar that you can see here, that is just kitchen roll and I've sort of bunched it up a little bit and run it along. Same with the brow, same thing. And the scars across it, so the stitches, that was just this stuff. That was just craft foam cut into tiny little thin strips and glued across the scar once it had been painted uh, red. That's it, that's how easy it is. And that's a really wonderful texture if you, you wanna do something creepy. It's got a kind of Necronomicon skin sort of uh, look to it. So yeah. Oh, the other thing with regards to paints, which I don't think I've mentioned yet, don't spray naked foam with enamel paint. Yes, it is far easier to spray paint an undercoat or a primer coat on these than it would be to hand brush it on, but you need to hand brush it on with acrylic. Enamel paint will just eat this stuff. So the last thing you wanna do is you've spent, I don't know, two hours getting all the texture done and the shaping done and the sanding done. Uh, yes, you can sand this. When I make them, I sand off all the edges and I sand them quite smooth with just, just some high grade sandpaper. Uh, what was I saying? The paint. Yeah, you don't want to spray this with enamel. It will just eat it. And if you've worked on it a couple of hours and you spray it with enamel, you're just going to cry. So make sure you cover it with uh, acrylic paint. So the paint that I use is just this wee cheap stuff. I think it's like $3 for a tube. And once it's all covered, however, so if you've painted the entire thing and it's all covered, there's no naked foam showing anymore, then you can hit it with enamel. So if you want to do a clear coat, that's the time to do it. Right. Uh, also, if you have an absolute disaster and you're like, oh, well, that was a waste of five hours. Don't worry, it happens to us all. Uh, oh, let me show you a couple of my disasters. Baby Yoda. So the ears are too long and pointy. The eyes look funky. The clothing, which is also just made out of this stuff, the entire thing. I don't know. I can see it's got that meeple shape, but I was never going to capture the 
a cuteness of Grogu, let's be honest. It was not going to happen. So that's a fail. <laughs> but uh, I might be able to salvage that for something else. I'm not sure. Uh, the most recent fail that I had was this one, which was going to be a steampunk uh, rocket ship. A little meeple in there in the porthole. And it just started to look like a flying cactus. So I was like, no, that's done. I'm hoping that I'll be able to salvage that because I still really want to do the steampunk one. I'll give you a sneak peek the one that I'm working on at the moment to show you how you can get your texture uh, to work for you on just a plain foam meeple. So this is just plain foam and I've textured it by dragging. Uh, this is just craft foam. So this is just this. Goes all the way around. And then I made a little craft foam bag. So again, this stuff. Put a little rivet in there and then when it's finished, it will just attach like that. I need to put eyes on and whatnot, but that's super simple. There's nothing fancy going on here like the 40k one. This is literally just carving out that sort of fur, painting it brown and bunging that on. Still still took a while, but it's worth it. I'm working on this little mini meeple at the moment for Meeple University. Uh, they've asked me to make the, the uh, hat bigger, so I'll be doing that and then painting that one up as well. Uh, other things? Just so I'm trying to cover as much as I can. The mummy, that was just jeans that I had and I was throwing them away. So I just cut strips and it had this really nice texture when I painted it and I added the creepy eye for creepiness state sake. Uh, Warhammer, I did, I had this coin with a skull on it. So that's the only part of it that isn't foam. The seal is made from foam clay, which I showed you just before. These are made from uh, foam, strips that you can buy they already come like that uh, i think that's it the back of it that's just some little wooden beads that i had laying around uh yeah so you can get quite a lot of detail with very little tools i think that is it i think i've covered everything if i haven't covered something and you're like well how did you do that and you've not mentioned uh glue so you can use super glue however super glue will eat into this foam uh, a little bit especially if you're gluing insulation on insulation you are going to lose a little bit of density there but you can do that that's that's not a problem once you've painted it up uh the other thing you can use is hot glue which i use all the time super easy again if you put too much if you hold the hot glue in an area too for too long you are going to melt this stuff it's very um fragile but hot glue works fine right so let me run through it super quickly for you again you get your foam your foam sheet this comes in a massive sheet from your hardware store it's just house insulation stuff that keeps your house toasty in winter and uh, cool in summer you get that cut it into a smaller piece so that you can work with it get your pattern pop your pattern on draw around with a sharpie or a texture or whatever you've got cut that out be it with a foam table or a blade then you end up with this and then it's time for you to just go to town with your tools once you've finished all your tooling and adding pieces then it's time for you to hit it with paint I usually do a black undercoat primer and then just paint it with whatever once it's fully covered and there's no naked foam showing uh, that is the time you can hit it with an enamel clear coat and that's it that's how easy these are to make now if you make them using this technique please 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 uh, give me a little shout out give, give this little channel a shout out because uh, you can see I don't have that many subscribers and I don't like uh, self spruiking I hate it I hate uh, self-promotion so if someone else is willing to uh, do that for me I appreciate it uh, to my soul because it's, it's not something I enjoy myself so if you use this idea just say uh, it's from board game grand over on YouTube and um, I would love 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 to see what you come up with it would be brilliant I've got a list at the moment of about I think it's sitting on 103 ideas that I've had so uh, that's a lot of meeples that is a lot and a couple of people have given me ideas as well so they've been added to that list if you do give me an idea and I like it enough to go ahead with it I will credit you of course if it was your idea and not mine and yeah that's that that's the first episode of chit speak done and I'm hoping it was a good one for you I don't run any ads or anything on my channel uh, purely for the love uh, of the board gaming community what a great community it is so get me pling let me know what you do I'd love to see it and most importantly take care of yourself Thank you.